What's up everyone? Hi and greetings from the Arctic. It's still snowing here. We have switched our bikes to two to train Silk Road bikes and there's one big difference between these two bikes. This bike which Matilda was cycling with is equipped with the Pinion gearbox and that bike which I was cycling with is equipped with the Rohloff gearbox. So this gives us the possibility to compare the Rohloff speed hub and Pinion gearbox in our world tour. So far we have cycled 1200 kilometers with these bikes and we think this is the first time anyone is testing them in this way side by side especially in winter conditions and with fully loaded touring bikes. We will keep cycling around the world with these two bikes and over time we will publish series of videos about this test. Both of these are also equipped with belt drives so we will mention something about that too since we have only been cycling with chain bikes before. This video is not sponsored by anyone. Two Terrain was kind enough to borrow us these two bikes for this project. Also it was a great timing because the Brussels Airlines did bend my frame on the way back from Africa. If you are wondering the differences between Rohloff and Pinion in a real life action, stick around. The Rohloff Speed Hub has 14 gears and there are several models of the Pinion gearbox, but the one we are using is the C-Line Pinion with 12 gears. And even if the Pinion has two less gears, it's not really something that we notice while cycling, even with heavy loaded touring bikes. We also never felt like we ran out of gears with either bike and you can of course adjust the gear ratio by changing the chain rings and cogs. On the pinion equipped bike we have a 39 tooth front chain ring and a 32 tooth rear cog and on the roller bike we have a 60 tooth front chain ring and a 19 tooth rear cog. We feel the pinion is slightly more efficient compared to the roller. We have switched the bikes and tried it with the luggage, without the luggage, many times and always, both of us, we felt a small drag with Rohloff. We don't have any data to back this up, but a technical explanation it could be inside of the Rohloff gearbox, more cogs are involved at the same time compared to the pinion. So this friction can explain why Rohloff feels less efficient. Also another factor can play a role here is the temperature. So far we have been only cycling in below zero temperature, but from now on the temperature is getting warmer. So we will see how the temperature is going to affect on this. We will keep you updated about this. The Rohloff feels smoother to pedal because when you start pedaling the pinion, two different free hubs need to engage, one in the gearbox itself and one of course in the rear wheel. This creates a small lag and there's a small click when the engaging happens, whereas the Rohloff basically starts moving immediately when you start pedaling. One of the ways to reduce this lag is to get a rear hub with the most engaging point as possible. By engaging point, I mean Powell's. As far as I know, Onyx makes the rear hubs with the most engaging point at the moment in the market, but those are pretty pricey. We are using two to train black label rear hub and we are pretty happy with it. The Rohloff makes a pretty loud sound in gears 6 and 7, so you definitely notice when you are shifting into those gears, but it should also reduce after a few thousand kilometers of cycling. So make sure to subscribe to get the follow up on that one. A pinion gearbox is heavier than a Rohloff speed hub, but the new pinion C line gearboxes are lighter than the old P line. So adding up the weight of the full drivetrain, the pinion C12 setup is only about 50 grams heavier than a Rohloff setup. Also, a pinion compatible frame is slightly heavier. A pinion compatible Silk Road frame is about 100 grams heavier than a Rohloff frame. So in total, a pinion C12 bike is about 150 grams heavier than a Rohloff bike. While cycling, of course, we don't really feel this difference in a weight, but with the pinion, the weight is in the center of the bike. But with the Rohloff, the most of the weight is in the rear wheel. So I do like here actually the pinion because weight gets divided between the front and the rear wheel and it feels quite different compared to the Rohloff in this case. Pinion and Rohloff, they both come with the twist shifter and we've been so happy with the both of their shifters. If you prefer to use other kind of shifters, for example, a drop bar shifters or flat bar trigger shifters, they do not offer any of those, but there's other brands in the market which they do make a shifters for Pinion and Rohloff. For example, Sank is one of them 
and they do make a flat bar trigger shifters and drop bar shifters for pinion and rohloff and those shifters they do look pretty promising to me but i haven't tried them yet in both of these systems you can shift several gears at once which is great especially when we are cycling this winter condition with super heavy load so in an uphill for example you might want to just stop pedaling for a split second and shift several gears down at once or if you are stopping in an uphill you can also change the gear before you start pedaling again that's something that has made cycling really easy the indexing on the shifter is more clear with the Rohlov, with the pinion sometimes, especially in the beginning I needed to get used to feeling the clicks because it's pretty subtle, so sometimes I would turn the shifter even 2-3 clicks before I was really sure I had shifted gears. That's one reason I feel all in all the Rohlov is a bit smoother to cycle. Once in a while Rohlov has been shifting the gear spontaneously without me touching the shifter, this hasn't happened so often, so hasn't been really bothering me, but we want to find out the reason of this and we are in contact with Rohloff regarding this subject. We will keep you updated about this in a future video. What about if your gearbox or your speed hub breaks down somewhere where there's no authorized service shop? Then you need to mail your gearbox to Germany for service. And here Pinion has one advantage because it's easier and probably cheaper to mail, just demount the gearbox from your bike and mail it to Pinion. With the Rohlov on the other hand you need to mail your full wheel, so it's a bigger parcel of course. But the upside is that you can just replace it with a different wheel and maybe go single speed for a while. So there are good sides to each of them. But how likely is this to happen to any of these gearboxes? We are testing them now side by side and we will see about that. But there's a one thing I would like to emphasize here, of course, any equipment can break down. These terms of being bomb proof, I really do not believe in that. But there's a two factor which plays a big role here. One is how well made the equipment is and the second factor, how good we do take care of it. I think if equipment is well made and we do service it on time, this will have a big impact on how long it will last. In both the Rohlov Speed Hub and the Pinion Gearbox, the gears work in a sealed oil bath, so they don't really get affected by dirt in the way that a traditional derailleur setup would. Both of these systems are pretty low maintenance, especially combined with the belt drive. To be honest, this has been really nice in this cold weather, because weather is so cold, you, we just cannot hold the tools in our hand for a long time, our hands get frozen, so this has been super handy. We have washed our belts twice, both in situations where it was like plus degrees, the roads were wet and the dirty water was full of salt and sand, so it made the belt squeak. We washed it just with warm water and an old toothbrush and it was almost like new again. Washing a belt is so much easier than washing a chain since there's no oil involved. Both of these gearboxes need oil changes once a year or for the whole of every 5,000 kilometers or pinion every 10,000 kilometers, so whichever comes first. Also, the Rohlov shouldn't really be submerged. If it is, if you need to cross a river, for example, then you should also change the oil. So if you're traveling far and remote distances with a Rohlov bike, you might need to carry more oil than if you are traveling with a pinion equipped bike. Both of these systems are pricey. Pinion is more expensive compared to the Rohlov. Also, you do need a special frame for pinion, but you can put the Rohloff in almost any bike. So that's really nice about the Rohloff. Also with the pinion, you do need a good rear hub, which can be pretty pricey. Other difference is in a warranty. Rohloff comes with a two years warranty, but if you buy a pinion P line, it comes with a five years warranty and C line, comes with a two years warranty and it is upgradable to five years warranty. So that's something to consider also. Many of you have been asking how we feel about the belt drivetrain compared to the chain and how these belt drivetrains have been performing so far. We will publish a separate video regarding this subject in the future, but in a short, belts have been working really well for us compared to the chain we really don't feel actually any difference except it's a little bit smoother but for us the most important thing about the belt is the durability belt should last around three times 
more than chain, that is a huge advantage. Also, this means we use less resources to cycle the same distance with belt compared to the chain. And that's really important for us. It's not maintenance free, but it's easy to wash. It's very quick. The advantage of a chain drive train is of course the spares are much more available than for a belt drive. With a belt you will want to carry a spare belt and you need a belt compatible frame of course. Okay, so what's our conclusion? Based on our experience so far, if you ask me now which one of these bikes I would choose to cycle around the world, I would go with the Pini. There's a two reason for this. The way it has been built I think it will last longer. And the second reason is I think it is more efficient compared to Rohloff. For me, the Rohloff has a big advantage in that the shifting feels much smoother. But I think I would still go with the Pinion because the Rohloff feels heavier to pedal and the shifting is really not an issue. To me, Rohloff feels a little bit like old diesel cars from 80s. When I cycle with it, it just goes, you know, but it's a little bit slow compared to Pinion. I want to mention both of them are really well made and now we have switched the bikes and we will keep you updated about this test. So that's it for this video. Hopefully you liked it and maybe learned something new. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and we will try to answer them in future videos. And if you wanted to find out more about these bikes, there's a link in the description below. So remember to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss our upcoming videos and our vlogs and also find us on all the other social media. In Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all of those. And see you on the road soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.